Hello, collective listeners. On today's episode, we have Matt Houston, an assistant strength coach with the Miami Heat. Uh, Matt was really great to speak with, energizing uh, and true to himself. We talk about that in the episode, and uh, I I think you guys will see that. Uh, Had ties with Samson, has known the company for a long time, so uh, they've been very excited to bring him on the podcast. I loved it, and I think you guys will enjoy as well. What's going on, Collective listeners? On today's episode of The Collective, we have uh, a very energizing guest today. <laughs> I mean, just over the phone, I mean, you can tell. he's He's got the classic strength coach voice, but, I mean, fantastic to speak with already. Uh, Matt Houston of the Miami Heat. Matt, thank you so much for coming on. Hey, man, thank you for having me, man. Absolutely. You got some long ties with Samson. We'll get into that uh, end of the episode a little bit. But to start it off, can you just give us uh, your background in strength and conditioning and then kind of what brought you uh, to your current position now yes sir um so man i started being a strength coach back in 2000 2011 once i got done playing college ball i interned at img academies it's my first strength and conditioning conditioning internship and also um our nfl combine training back in the day with lawrence steve and coach scott gattigan my guys over there and in big Steph, and then transitioned you know to, to colorado state uh a year later 2012 and which is my first collegiate gig. And I was a restricted earnings assistant <laughs> in 2012. Very uh, fortunate. And under Mike Kent and Rashad Harris, after that season, I transitioned where I met my guys at Samson at University of Hawaii. Go Bulls, baby. And uh, I was there for two and a half years. Started off as an intern and then moved my way up and to a graduate assistant. Worked with every team except for women's tennis. There and uh, yeah, man, I got my first gig, University of South Dakota in 2015, uh, 15 16 season as uh, in the in associate director for the in the department in under strength and conditioning. Uh, and I'm sorry, with my guy Jevin Bowman and in the strength and conditioning department. So I was the an associate director and also head of men's basketball and head of softball. Also, uh, transitioned. I went to P3 after that for a couple months, interned there, and then took a little, and then took a curveball and went to China for four years, man. That's quite the curveball. Yeah, four <laughs> years. Uh, I was a national team strength coach in 2017 for Team China. Did two years on the women's side, two years on the men's side. Was uh, very fortunate and won two championships with the Guangdong Southern Tigers. And uh, 2019 to 20 season and 2020 and 21 season, and then my and then two years, at, and, and then after that uh, stint, went and worked for the Sioux Falls Sky Force, uh, and which is our uh, our development team, our G League team with the Miami Heat. And then after this past two seasons with the Sky Force, I'm here now as my uh, my first season with the Miami Heat, man. and and uh, it's been a journey, but I'm super thankful. Oh, man, that's awesome. That's quite the journey. I can't wait to break this down, man. There's a lot I want to ask about in there. Uh, you know, my first question is, this is actually the first time as the host I've spoken with somebody who's worked at IMG. What was that environment like? I mean, especially, you know, in that high school environment, so high level. Uh, just talk to me about that a little bit, please. Well, uh, it's funny because when I was at IMG 2011, uh, it actually, the football program now, the high school program, it was only a quarterback academy then. Oh, okay. Chris Winky had it going, man. You know, he was having guys you know, in Russ Wilson, you know, Ryan Tannehill, guys like that coming through it. And, and there's a long, a long line of guys. But uh, Chris Winky, he had those guys going, man. And uh, that was a great experience in his own. And then just at that time, more like a boarding school. Kids from out the country coming in, you know, these, and these young kids with bright and bright futures. Come to see, man, you know? Cause, yeah. Uh, so many talented kids and just different back and backgrounds and it's a unique situation without a doubt. Absolutely. That's, that's, that was like my dream situation, except I wasn't very good, you know, so <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have any place being in a spot like that, you know, <laughs> Man, it's a, uh, and you know, it's a, it's a pretty penny to it. Yeah. <laughs> a great experience. Though. Yeah, right. so. for sure. All right. And then I, you know, I want to break down China a little bit too. Okay. I mean, that, that's gotta be quite the experience there. So, I mean, first of all, my question would be, how did you approach the language barrier? Well, I was, uh, you know, we actually had amazing translators out there. You know, it's, uh, my guys are 
And they were talented, man, because they could talk formal English, but then they could talk slang, too. So yeah. I get going, man. I'm all over the place. So if you can translate for me, <laughs> <laughs> you know, they're uh, super talented. And, uh, yeah, man, so, and it went smooth. Do you, do you feel like, uh, I mean, you know, the strength coach's job sometimes is a lot to be the culture center too, right? Yeah. Uh, is that the case uh, in China? Is that the kind of similar setup for the career or is it more of just the science-based side? No, I think with in China, it's a little bit less scientific and it's more, yeah. like you said, culture and the work, you know, so that, that part it translated with me well. So obviously you need to know the science in behind what we're doing. But over there, it's they're about working hard and they're about getting to it. So that uh, something that I like to do, like I say, get to the money. So yeah. uh, get to the money. And like you said, you have to set your culture, regardless if you're in a different country or if you're here in the States, like that weight room, that's the tone center. Mm-hmm. So when guys come in, I don't care what race you are, what language you speak, you come in here, we're going to work. <laughs> and, and, and we're going to get to the money, man. So, yeah, yeah it's going to work get, perfect. <laughs> get to the money. I like that, man. I like that a lot. I'm, I'm going to have to steal that a little get bit. Get to the money. Yeah. We, uh, that, that reminds me, the first time I was at uh, Texas Tech practice, yep. uh, somebody, somebody threw a bad pass, yep. and, uh, you know, the coach stopped it. And she goes, hey, you know what they say in the pros? You know, and everybody's like kind of silent. She said, you're messing with my money. You throw a pass <laughs> like that, you're messing with my money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so I, I'll use that, but I'm going to use get to the money now. I'm going to steal that from you a little yeah, bit. Man. Hey, all good, man. Get to the money. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, uh, you know, one thing we did mention in the beginning is you do have kind of a history with Samson, you know, guys like uh, Andy, uh, who's helped me get the podcast hosting job, uh, is super connected guy, but loves you. Can you kind of talk about your history with Samson uh, and what it was like working with them? Well, I mean, it's one of the actually the first company that that I was associated with because like personally, because Tommy Heffernan obviously had a long has had a long-term relationship with Samson, of course. And uh, they would come to the uh, to our clinics in Hawaii. And I mean, even though I was a graduate assistant, or first as an intern and then a graduate assistant, I mean, they always treated me like I was a full-time, full-time coach, you know, and they would ask me in different things just about, you know, the process of being a strength coach. And it's just always a family-based, of, I'm sorry, a family-oriented company, man. And, always made me feel like I was a part of the company, you know? So I got a lot of love for Samson and it's just, I, and like I said, man, I met these guys when, when I was, shoot, 22 and, and 23 years old, you know? Yeah. Now I'm going on 35. So it's been a long, you know, 12 year relationship, you know, friendship and, uh, and, and couldn't thank these guys more, you know, couldn't be more thankful for them, man, because super loyal people. And I see why Tommy has stayed connected for so long. Oh, yeah. I mean, and that's always like the thing you remember the most, right? Is the people who treat you well when you aren't necessarily like the big name. Yeah, you know, know, Uh, exactly. Oh, yeah. I remember all of it. Um, There was one particular actual NFL scout at Tennessee's Pro Day. I mean, like he just talked to me, you know, I was was an intern, you know, uh, I mean, I I was setting up the Vertex and he and and I chopped it up a little bit. And it was so nice just like to speak with somebody and. And uh, I remember like tre- getting treated at that level because sometimes you don't, you know. I mean, nah, man. At that yeah, level. you can ask, so, man. When you're coming up, some people give you the cold shoulder, man. Like you know, you go to these different strength and conferences, and you and you're meeting in different people. And if you're not a big name, people will shrug you off. Oh Please man, believe. I, I, I remember every single one that shrugged me off when I was here. <laughs> I ain't gonna blast yes, nobody. Yeah. Oh I yeah, I won't blast nobody, but I remember every single one. You know what I mean? Because. You, you know how it is, man. So the people that do show you love, Samson, my guy, yep. you know, uh, I remember that, you know, because like I said, you, you always remember the people that give out a hand. Oh, yeah. And, and it, it's lasting. It's so lasting. And I, I actually, like, at a conference before, I remember I was talking with somebody. Like, and then as soon as, like, somebody else came by, big name and strength and conditioning, he's like, all right, you got a nice to meet you. And, like, immediately walked away. I was like, damn, bro, like, like that? Like, <laughs> so, hey, man, it can be nah, cold out here. <laughs> you know how it is. You know how it gets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, what was that like at uh, Hawaii, being able to work with so many sports? You know what? It helps expand your mind because, obviously, every sport is so different. There are things that apply to every sport. 
but the details compared to volleyball and, and football are different. You know what I mean? Over at oh, yeah. or in, in volleyball, a lot more technical in certain areas. So it makes you lock in to the, the specificity of, you know, the profession and also the sport. That's what I appreciate about it, working with different sports. You have to go in and dive into the, and like I said, the details of what you're, what you're doing. It challenges you. It cha- I mean, it makes you think. Out of doubt. And if you're not somebody who loves it, people get complacent and it shows. And the athletes, and the athletes see it. If you're not progressing and you're not doing different things and progressing, you know, very obvious. So that's why I love it. Well, yeah. So, I mean, I just remember working with cheerleading and, like, it, I think uh, it, what, what helped me be successful with that team was yep. I, like, really just wanted to know more about cheerleading. Like, I didn't know how it was scored. I didn't know anything like that. Uh, and so they said, hey, this new show came out. On, it's, like, called Cheer. I looked at that. It was more of, like, a uh, – you know, not really about cheerleading, but more about this one specific school. Yep. Uh, but I mean, it was, it helped me to just kind of uh, see some of the struggles that they went through, but then just even them hearing me say like, Oh yeah, I watched cheer. You know, like they, they immediately, yep. like you said, the athletes exactly. respond. They know when you care. Yeah, exactly. Like that. And that's the thing. They know. Oh yeah. And them ladies, them guys are strong cheerleaders. No cheerleaders. No, no joke, man. Hey, we had a, <laughs> they're uh, no joke. We, I got a video of it. We got a, uh, one of the guys squatting 585. It was no joke now. Oh, yeah. And he dropped it on me, too. You're holding someone over your head like that. You got to be oh, stable. Yeah. You got to be sturdy now. And oh, absolutely. You got to be stable. You got to have a lot of things going. All that teeth fine. And all, you got to be mobile and stable. Like, you got to be. I was, I was young, though. I don't know if I programmed the best for them. It was a lot of 531. <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot of, hey, let's hey. just see how strong we can get. Hey, yeah. we all did the 531 back in the day, man. It, <laughs> hey, it gets it done, though, man. It gets Absolutely. It done, so. Absolutely. And so uh, I, I'm curious about this, too, right? This transition from, you were a football player, correct? Yep. University of so, Washington, baby. Go dogs. Oh, yeah. You, you beat the Ducks. That'd be a nice little win right there. Be nice. Hey, go, hey, people, Michael Penix. They kind of downplay him in, in, in the kids, but the kids are real deal. As oh, we, yeah. he, he doesn't get as much attention as everyone else does, but that's and that's Eight. my Heisman right now. That's a ball player right there. Ball, ball player. player. Yeah. So this transition from football to basketball, I'm curious about it myself because obviously, like I said, I was a football player in high school. Uh, I was a GA with Tennessee football. I, I loved the, the game of football, but – I eventually transitioned to basketball and has grown my love for the game so much, but also just for strength and conditioning as a whole. What's that process been like for you? I think for me, though, man, because uh, I grew up playing and playing ba- in basketball, you know, big basketball fan. All my guys know I got, I've always had hoop dreams, you know. Uh, but I've been blessed, man. Like I said, my cousin went to the NBA out of, uh, after college. My roommate played at the, in the NBA as well. Uh, so I've been around a lot of good basketball minds. And even when I was younger, I played for some, some really good coaches, youth coaches. And uh, I think with me, I just, with a mix of my experiences through, you know, and through work and uh, just my, my, in my background, like I said, with the people that I, and that I've been blessed to be around, it didn't make it a hard transition for me because like I said, I've been around some, some pretty knowledgeable people and uh, it didn't make it that hard for me. Uh, I think, I think with the football side, I think I try and bring the football intensity to the court or to to the weight room in that aspect. So I, yep. I don't I don't change who I am. I don't change my my approach. If that makes sense. For so sure. Let's- my my intensity is it's a little bit lower because I'm not in linebacker mode, but I, I'm the same way. You know what I mean? I'm fiery. I'm you know I'm, I'm I treat it the same. So. I, I bring that feel, but at the same time, applying obviously the specificity of basketball. Yep, absolutely. What I mean, what are some what are some examples of that intensity? I'm curious because I can I can feel it. I mean, just through the screen. I don't really even know, man. I think I know I'm a pretty loud person. I know I, I yell at times, but I probably shouldn't. Uh, you know, my guy Aaron Ferran, he he does a good job, man, of of, of dealing with me. You know, uh, he's our head strength coach, <laughs> so I I think. Uh, I don't know, man. I, I don't really script. I kind of just go. Whatever yeah. comes out, it comes out, you know. So yeah. 
Yeah. No, that's fantastic. I mean, and now, I mean, in the NBA, I mean, this is it's known as a uh, ex- extremely long schedule, right? I mean, some of the most games uh, in a professional sports league. How do you manage that balance uh, between working in the NBA, between your life, uh, and just so you make sure you have a quality life overall? I think uh, during my downtime, and I'm pretty simple, you know, uh, in my downtime, I'm real chill, man. Talk to my daughter. Yeah. You know, my daughter's not not with me right this second. My daughter, uh, we were living together in the past in two in two years, but she's in school right now in Phoenix. So that's my pride and joy. So try talking with her as much as possible. Keep my downtime. I'm I'm pretty low key, man. I'm a homebody. You know, a simple so guy. Yeah. I'm simple, simple guy, man. Simple. So my downtime, lay low, man. Hang out. Yeah. Talk to my kid. I'm, I'm and I'm real chill, man. Hey man, that's good. That's good though. That, no, but that's I mean for real, that's how I am too. It's, it's literally it's just, you know, I don't have any kids, it's just me, my fiance, and the dogs. I know? think uh I think because when I'm at work and when I'm in the mode, I'm so in the mode that when I'm done, I I, I, I it's like my it's like my decompression, you know. So yep. I'm just chilling, man, and then uh yeah, talk to my baby. That's my pride and joy. That's awesome. So what are you doing that free time? Because, I mean, we, we, we talked on the uh, phone beforehand. You were like, I'm a guy outside of straight and conditioning, too. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, I think, you I talk, think man, I'm like, you know, I try and get the guys together, you know, whether it's the other strength coaches, just more of the fellowship, you know, our staff. Just, just try to get it and get us together, man. Just, just, just something outside the weight room or outside of work, you know, whether it's going and grabbing food at a restaurant, you know, just anything outside the weight room, I just try to be. I'm simple, man. Just go to restaurants, hang out. I'm a simple guy. Or I'm at the house. That's really it. Food in, in the house, you know? Oh, yeah. No, no, no. Trust me. I, I know. I, <laughs> I'm big on it. So, <laughs> Do you feel like organizing those activities makes you guys better as a staff, as a whole? Without a doubt. I think you, yeah. you, you need that camaraderie. You need to know each other. You know what I mean? Um, I think if you're just working and you're not bonding and you're not – and like I said, if you're not building, if you're not building relationships, and you're not having the, these moments of fellowship, it's a different, it's a different kind of bond when you're not having those things. You know, I consider, yeah. you know, Eric and Hunter, Hunter Glasscock and Eric Ferran, uh, and those are my brothers, man. And even you know, our assistant coaches, you know, and Coach Po. Like I, I love these guys, man. So, family, yeah. try and keep it close. <laughs> No, absolutely. I mean, and, and I would agree. I would say the same. You know, um, on my end, like it's, I think it's really easy to try to leave work at work, right? And and uh, and make people you work with part of work, right? And I understand these are whole human beings outside of this. You know, like and what? I, I mean, it's it's just like teams, right? And and I know some people who may not be as bought into the team aspect or freshmen first coming in. They're like, why do we do so many team activities? And it's like, because if you know this person more than anything and you trust this person, that's when we really become a team. I, and like I said, when you're connected and when you when you can trust people, it builds a whole different dynamic. You know, one, it brings out the best of people. And then yeah. when you trust somebody, you'll do, you'll run through a brick wall for them. You know? Absolutely. And, and, and vice versa. So... I, like I said, man, I'm all about the fellowship, man, and trying to help and the people that I work with and the people that I call my brothers be the best versions of themselves. And obviously, the better I am, it makes me uplift others. So you are who you surround yourself with, right? Hey, 100. percent Without a doubt. Yeah. Without a doubt, I believe in that. Do you do you try to take the same aspect with uh, the players you work with as well? Oh, without a doubt, man. If and like we talked about, the players know when you care. And yeah. And, and when you care, it's a different kind of passion you'll bring, a different, you know, attention to detail every day. Like, you won't let them, you know, knee up, toe up means knee up, toe up because I care about you. Chest up, back flat, it means that because I care about you. Hey, man, sit, sit lower. Huh? Yeah, you heard me sit down because that means when I'm holding you accountable, I care about you. And the, and the players, no, I don't, I'll never disrespect any female athlete, any male athlete, never. But I care about you, so. I'm going to tell you, you know, I'm going to hold you accountable and tell you what's right. And I feel the same way about people I work with, yeah. being connected, hey, caring about you, people. Have you ever felt like you had athletes, like, buck back on that a little bit? I've been very fortunate, man. Uh, <laughs> I haven't had that since probably my first internship. Wow. I've been very I've been very fortunate. I've worked with some great people. And I think, honestly, I haven't – I've been in a lot of situations, like I said, like here now at the Heat and blessed to work with a lot of amazing people. Yeah. That doesn't happen. 
I've been very no, fortunate, man. I've been very fortunate to have great mentors and work with great athletes and great yeah. and great coaching staff and support and support staff. Well, you know, I think uh, this brings to mind like a saying for me, right? Uh, it's like you run into one jerk during the day, you ran into a jerk. You run into 10 jerks during the day, you're the jerk. Right. And so exactly. And exactly. for me, I feel like it's the opposite for you. Right. I mean, if you if you can sit here successfully and say throughout your career, you really haven't had anybody buck back, haven't had issues like that. I think that speaks to what you do. I, I mean, I, I try to be like I said, man, I try to be uplifting. I try to be myself. I try to be true to myself. I yeah. actually I know I'm true to myself. And I tell my I tell my athletes and my players, to be that way. If you're not true to you. You can't be the best version to, and to others. Mm. And it was, so so what advice would you give to strength coaches who maybe don't feel that way about uh, and about being true to themselves yeah you, you won't go too far <laughs> <laughs> i mean i mean that's just being real yeah. that's just being real yeah. if you're not true to yourself because eventually you're going to get found out if you're not true to yourself true. you're faking it and you're being something that and that you're not one day you're going to run into a real one they're going to tell you it's not it and i just yeah. and i just I modify what and what I was gonna say, but you know what I mean. Like that's just what it is, man. You got to be true to yourself because yeah. when people see you, it's real. And when you're a strength coach, you have to be real. You can't. I, I get a lot of people say the word buy in, right? It's okay, and I'm nothing against people saying buying into what we're doing. I I have nothing wrong with saying that, but I don't say buy in. I want people to believe in me. I'm a, I'm not selling nothing. I want you to believe in me. And by believing in me, I'm going to be who I am. And you're going to see, and I'm going to be an example. And I'm going to work hard. I'm going to be day in and day out. I can't tell you to work hard if I don't work hard. Yeah. I want, no, I want you to believe in me. And that, and that's what I, and I stand on. So people that don't feel that way, I mean, you, you don't have to believe in that. You don't have to feel that way. But eventually it's going to get, it's going to get found out. Oh, to get exposed for sure. Don't get exposed now. <laughs> Oh, absolutely. But so. but same to what you just talked about with your athletes, right? If you don't have somebody who's not going to check you on that, then it, that person probably doesn't really care about you. So if I came in one day and I wasn't how I am, they would call me out. He was up with you today. Yeah. He was up with you because I want my athletes to be like that. That's the culture. That's how we are. We're truth tellers. And yeah. that's how my mentors mentored me to be a truth teller and to be real and to be yourself every day. Do you Do you... I mean, I, I don't know necessarily. I, I, I'm not in a way that you struggle with it, but do you feel like there's a necessity to be on every day because of that role? You have to be on. You're the culture. Yeah. If I have an off day, my athletes depend on me to bring it every day because they're going to have, because they, we're all human. They're going through stuff in their personal lives that people don't, and that's the thing people forget that these athletes are human beings. They're going through stuff. So you never know what they're going through. So you, you got to be the person to, uh, and uplift them. So I can't, how I look at it, I can't have an off day. Mm. So what, how do you check? Uh, Go ahead. So even if I have my own personal problems, before I walk in that, be, and before I come to work, I pray and I tap myself on the head. It's time to tap in. It's, it's, it's time to roll, baby. As soon as I walk in that facility, in that arena, it's time. Yeah, get to the money. <laughs> hey, get to the money. Here we go. <laughs> this what hey, this is what we're gonna have to call this episode. Get to the money. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, but that was gonna be my question. Like, how do you check yourself? You know, because I feel like this is important to have that system. And we talked about uh, on our women's team energy giving behaviors, right? EGBs, and we track EGBs every day. It's how many high fives you give, how many hands on the shoulders you give. You know, physical contact physical uh, or audible uh, contacts and things. And, and we talked about it because of what uh, Shaka Smart says with Marquette, right? Uh, and, and his whole thing is if you are not living up to what you need to do or if you uh, maybe didn't perform well, miss a shot when you're a shooter, uh, it's a two claps and a quick yell. You know, it's a quick little physical reset. So I like the head tap, man. No, but you got a head tap. Like, <laughs> it's funny. I'll yell too. Like, I'll pray, obviously, before I walk in the arena in the car. Get my head tap, but when I walk in the room, sometimes I just, I just yell. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I just get one out, like I, you know. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I throw on the music. Like before I put in, throw on the music, I get it. I yell one time, throw on the music, I yell one more time, and it's, it's to the money, you know. Get so, to the money. Yeah. What uh, what, what kind of music guy are you? What, what do you like listening to in the weight room? Oh, I'm, I'm a future guy. 
Future, okay. I'm future. okay. All my athletes. Yep. You ask any athlete from when I was even younger, I, I'm a future guy. I'm a yep. Future. We uh, March Madness is always going to get people going. I March mean, 100 percent of the time. And March Madness, seven twelve. Oh you know, yeah. You know, I I, I got a few. Uh, Maybach. That was my one back oh, in South oh. Dakota. I was blast. Maybach <laughs> back at, at like five thirty six a.m. And we had that dome, <laughs> old school dome back then. And, yeah, man, I was blasting that back in the day. So future, that's my I'm, my go to. That's my guy right there. I'm getting out of touch, man, because when I first came over here, you know, I, I had the guys that I like. I mean, like, I'm a bit, I'm a massive YG fan. I love YG. Like, you know, like, and, and the pe- like the guys on the team here are ruthless. Like, they will clown me for any- – as soon as there's one bad song, like, they'll immediately be like, oh, who's on Ox? Like, and they know it's me, you know, like, so they'll get on me. Uh, but they're big on the Young Boy and Gunna. Those are the two now. The, hey, you know what? I think right now all the young guys love it, Young Boy. All the young yep. guys. All my players, most of my younger players, these guys get love young, young one gun. I like Gunner's new album too. Oh, it's fantastic! But I'm a uh, yeah. I say I'm a future Nip, Tupac. And I'll throw on a little fifty every now and then. Some old school fifty. Oh yeah, I was about to say fifty for me. And then I, I it was kill- I put on Heat the other day, and and everybody's like, no, this is bad tunes. I was like, come on, man, like, you gotta help me out here a little bit. Like, <laughs> it can't be. But Young Boy is always the bench test day. So I mean, you're you're obviously a very positive guy, very high energy. Like, what are some challenges you're facing in your career? What are some hardships that you've gone through, and how did you approach those? I think um, when when I was younger, it's. Uh, but when you're young, you want to happen so fast, you know, and it's been a long time for me, you know, to get to where I wanted or, or where I'm at now and where, I, where I've wanted to be. But I, I think when I, when I was younger, I was like, man, like I felt I was ready and I was already where I should be. And I wasn't, you know, and mm-hmm. when, when you are younger, you got to humble yourself to realize everything happens for a reason. And I, yeah. Back then, I used to be like, man. I want to get here. I want to do this. I want to do that. And I had to work on being patient, you know, and that just comes with experience, man. You got to, patience is a big thing. You know, you got to humble yourself and realize not everyone's journey is the same. There, and there's guys that get one internship and then they work in the NFL or NBA. There's guys that, you know, like that happens. In my case, it didn't happen that way. You know, like I said, I was, I've been an intern three, three times. I've been a restricted earnings assistant. I've been a graduate assistant. I've been a high school strength coach, a high school head strength coach. I've been a collegiate strength coach, mid-major. I've been an international strength coach, a G League strength coach. Like that that's not an elevator, man. That's that's stairs. Yeah. So that was one of the things that I struggled with when I was younger, but now being 35, I embrace it to the max. You know, like I, that's one thing I always say. You can't take yeah. the elevator, you gotta take stairs. And that was a struggle for me then, and I embrace it now. Man, I got to steal. I got to steal that quote for the show because our our team's uh, phrase is "take the stairs." You know, 100%. Yeah, and every I, and it's so funny because we'll go. I'll go over to the main athletics building because we don't have any stairs where I work. Uh, but the main athletics building, I'll look at the elevator, and everybody always go off on the elevator. And I immediately got to go left to the stairs. <laughs> yeah, man. I'm not. I'm not getting caught not taking the stairs one day. I'll tell you that. About the stairs, man. Yeah, that's what it's about. How did you how did you develop that patience though? Was it through your faith or through faith conversations think, uh, with others? Uh, yeah, man. It, and there was times, man. Like I said, when I was in China, I was by myself. Yeah. And COVID hit. You, you can. There's times when you're by yourself in that hotel overseas, and my family's not there. I'm by myself in a hotel, and you look outside and there's no one outside. You, you got to have some patience. You got to. That's my faith. You know, yeah. the man of, and the man upstairs, and also in myself. Like you have to build that. You know, and like I said, I, I, I dove every time that I'm closer to the man upstairs, like when I'm in a routine, I feel that's when I'm at my best. I'm, during my downtime, I'm decompressed. I'm, everything just in my life flows. When I'm away, my personal opinion, when I'm not in the mode like how I should be, things kind of start, you know? So I try my best to, to end the stay in the word, man. And yeah. That's what helps me. Well, I, you know, that's not I, everybody, but that's what helps me. It's not for everybody, right? But I do think that there is something that always should center you in your life, right? I mean, you know, so for some people it would be faith. For other people, um, it may be a person within their life, right, that they're always surrounding themselves with. Like, definitely my fiancé for me. My daughter is something that, you know, obviously I'm not perfect. I've messed up in my life, as we all do. 
but my daughter, I, I, I strive to be the best person I can and for her, you know, and obviously I fall short at times, but that's my why. Besides my faith, that's another reason why that keeps me going. You know, I, yeah. I, I'm not going to let my daughter down regardless. Yeah. No, it's, I mean, Marley. And it's such a, such a driving force, man. Yeah. So, wow. Well, we, we talked about the lows. Tell me about some highs, man. I want to hear about some of your highlights of your strength career. Man, uh, shoot. Won two championships in China. Guangdong yep. President Tigers. I, I was blessed to work for the national team in China in 2017. Uh, I would say we uh, we made the Final Four in the G League last season. I wish we could have won it, you know, but, you know, my first year in the playoffs in the NBA going to the finals. Those are all highs, you know. Obviously, we fell short in the finals last year and also in the G League, but those are highs, man. A lot of people don't even get that opportunity to go. No. So even though we fell short, you still got to look at your blessings of even getting that, you know, even getting there. And uh, you know what the highs are for me too? What was when I was interning and when I was at the lower levels because it, I earned, I learned how to work. You know, like during those times is what got me here for, for, for these times. Yep. When I'm at Hawaii working with five, six teams and I'm teaching a weightlifting class noon and I'm getting there at 4.45 and I'm not leaving until seven at night. Those are, those are a high for me because those athletes and those people that help me along that journey, when I'm here, that that's what I think about. You know, that's a high for me, even though yeah. people might, might not think that. But these highs and these, you know, these cool things that I've got to experience are through those times. So I look at those times as highs too, man, because I, I, I was loving get, and getting up then. I love the same now is when I work, work for free. Now, yep. obviously, there's the, the blessings of taking care of your family and yourself and all that. But you ask anyone, I, I love strength and conditioning like this when I was 22 years old. Yeah. I so mean, it, 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 I, you know, we I, I've been fortunate to be able to interview somebody who's a former intern here and now GA. Uh, and then another GA also came on this uh, podcast. And so I was talking with them and I was like, man, like, y'all, you're like, this is something you look back on. And you're like, man, I loved this time. And, you got to. Was, and the camaraderie, like you talked about earlier too, is so high amongst that. Cause you, every other GA, every other intern is going through it with you too. Oh man. Like even like, for example, when I was a restricted earnings assistant at Colorado state, right now, Butler, Dwayne Perry, those guys, man, those are my guys, man. Like, yeah. we were getting up, setting up, moving the weight room, and you know how it is, man, moving the sleds, and it's still pitch black outside, no lights oh, on. Man. You know, the sleds. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, when you're setting all that up, when I'm in Hawaii doing, and doing all that stuff, you remember the, in those times. And it, it builds character, man, you know? Builds character when you're, when I was at Hawaii, I'm an intern. We go to these uh, to these strength conferences, and Samson got the bar out there. We got to pick up 365, 400 pounds cold, you know? And you're in uh-huh. pick, Tommy's like, man, pick that you, you know? Matt, pick that up right now. Matt, come and pick that up. Like, those yep. are the times you remember, you know? But when you got to pick up 400 pounds cold, and because you, you're an intern, and, you're, and your boss is telling you what's up. Don't be yep. scary. Go, go ahead and get that done. And make it look easy. Hey, and you better make it look easy. Make too. it look easy. Make, make it look, it look easy. easy. <laughs> you, man, please believe me. So I'm gonna tell you, you better make it look easy too. So, oh my goodness, oh, absolutely. Times, you know what I mean? That I appreciate. Oh yeah. Hey, I mean, but then like that's what grows the love too, right? I mean, like in those like you just spoke to, you know, like it's that it's all that you worked hard for this, and it makes it so much sweeter when you get to oh, the spot man. where you're currently at. It's yeah. cool, man. It, 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 I wouldn't change it, man. I wouldn't, you know. Yeah. I wouldn't change it. I saw I saw a really cool quote the other day. It was like, never forget that uh you know past you would do anything to be where current you is 100 percent. so when people complain about their salaries or they complain about this would you have complained about the salary you're making now when you first started at 22 years old or 23 mm-hmm. you'd be in awe <laughs> you know what i mean like when Absolutely. you get to where you want to get and you start feeling yourself a little bit remember you what took you to get here and what if you would have made that then you'd have been going crazy Yep, a hundred percent. And remember how you loved it working for free. That's why you're oh, thankful yeah. every day. You thank the Lord every day for what you have now. Mm. And uh, don't uh, forget the attitude of gratitude. You know, it's gratitude, man. You got to. Oh yeah, 
Absolutely. No, and I mean, you know, it's it so funny. I got to interview my old uh, first ever mentor yesterday, you know, That's and cool. we were just like, I, I, you know, I hope it was a good podcast for everybody, but, but it was just me, it was me and her just cutting it up the whole time because it's like, it brings back, it floods back all these positive memories, right? right. And you never remember the negative stuff really with it. If you get that negative headspace, you may, but almost all the time when I think back about it, I think about the fun that I had at that time. Yeah, man, you, you got to, man. You got to, like you said, you got to cherish those moments because you never yeah. know what's going to happen. We're not promised yeah. tomorrow, man. So you got to live in the now and embrace even, but you got to embrace the past and what you've been through in your journey. Mm -hmm. That's one thing I, I don't forget. My athletes, the people that I worked with and have come across, came across, they're the reason why I'm here. Yep. Every mentor, every athlete, you know, I remember when I worked with the sailing team, developed programs for it was the sailing team. And I'll tell you right now, the most disciplined, on point, attention to detail team you'll ever come across. They have to be, right? I'm telling you, when I mean everything was coordinated from the warm up, I'm telling you, still to this day, and I've come across some great athletes, but yep. when it comes to discipline, my sailing team was the most disciplined team I've ever had. That That's was my awesome. first team. That is awesome. The most disciplined team I've ever had. And I've had some, dis great. some very disciplined teams in addition to detail, but they were the still. And that's, that's how golf can be too. Right, because because it's so technical of a sport, right? Yeah. And so sailing, I'm sure, is extremely technical. One small error, all of a sudden you're out the boat. I'm telling you, and I, I'm not not the most talented, but when I mean attention to detail, if you would have seen them from day one how they first started to even day to day twenty and so so far like going forward, just it 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 was crazy. The warm up they held back to where I would change it, and they would just right away, and they would talk and. I didn't have to coach them like that. They were coaching each other. <laughs> Serious, man. I didn't That's have awesome. to. Yeah. So. Well, you know, it, it, the final question I have for you, and the last thing I kind of want to know is just, is there any advice you'd like to impart upon the other strength coaches who are listening? First off, you got to be loyal. Right? Mm. Loyal and loyal and loyal and loyalty outwork everyone. But you got to be loyal. And, you, and the one thing I'll say, you got to be the most humble person in the room. You're there to serve. When you start feeling yourself and you start thinking you're better than your athletes or you're above your boss and all that, no, no. You got to be the most humble person in the room. You got to be a servant. You're serving the athletes. You're there for them. It's not about you, it's about them. That would be my biggest, you know, I, I think Coach Mike Kent. Told me something that, I, that always sticks with me. But when you're talking to your athletes, talk to them, not down to them. You don't talk down to people, you talk to them. And that's a part of being humble. You know what I mean? Be humble and, you know what I mean? That's those yeah. my things. Loyal, hard work, outwork everyone, and be there for your athletes, man. Yeah. Well, it's, it's clear from this conversation, you live up to your advice. I try, man. <laughs> I try. I try. I try. <laughs> No, no, it's, 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 I think you're doing for real. So, I, I mean, Matt, thank you so much for your time, man. I, I really appreciate it. This has been, again, always, always energizing. I could, from the first time we spoke on the phone, right? I, I knew it was going to be a good conversation. I'm glad we got to I get got it down. It, I appreciate you, man. Hey, so, stay tuned with the heat, man. You, you a heat fan now, man. I'm locked in. I, 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 locked no, in trust now. me, I'm locked in. I want to hear you no on choice. the thing talking about other teams now. <laughs> <laughs> you, got, you, know, you got to be a little biased now, man. I don't even know any other NBA teams. I don't even know how many there are. I just know the Miami Heat exists, and that's it. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, I appreciate it. Well, I'll be watching for sure, especially the finals this year. My God, appreciate you, man. Oh, yeah. Appreciate Absolutely. You. Well, thank you, Matt. Thank you. Have a good one.